We live in a world where superheroes exist only in movies and comic books. But even if they did exist in the real world, they wouldn't be able to solve many of the problems we face today. Think about it. Hello Superman, listen, yes we need your help, the monsoon is in full swing in India and cities are going to get flooded and our drains can't take it, you just, you, can you do something? Okay. Uh, how about heat waves? Heat waves, do you have freeze breath or something that could maybe cool cities down? No? Do you think Batman could help? Hello? Hello? Very mature. Trees. Now trees are superheroes and some of their superpowers are very relevant to the problems that we face today. They provide us with oxygen, food, fuel, shelter, bind the soil, recharge groundwater, capture and sequester carbon, provide shade and regulate local climate. Of all of these superpowers, I've been fascinated by how trees cool the air around them. This is an underrated superpower. We instinctively know that if we go and stand under the shade of a tree when it's hot, we will feel cool. But why? How does this cooling work? The cooling effect from trees is quite impressive. Three scientists conducted a series of studies between 2009 and 2010 on 10 different roads in Bangalore. They looked at ambient air temperatures and road surface temperatures on stretches of the road that had trees and compared it with stretches of the road that did not have trees. Their results were quite astonishing. For example, on one of these roads, Bellari Road, at 2 p.m., ambient air temperatures were 34.5 degrees Celsius on sections without trees as compared to 29.8 degrees Celsius under the shade of the trees. The road surface temperatures had a starker difference. At 3 p.m., the thermometer read 51.5 degrees under the open sun compared to 32.5 degrees under the tree shade, a difference of 19 degrees Celsius. Several other studies have demonstrated that the cooling effect from trees can range between 2 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius. I'll put some of these links as well as the link to the Bangalore study in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. So how do trees do this? They do this through a combination of two processes. Intercepting sunlight, which is just a fancy way of saying that they provide shade, and transpiration cooling. Let's look at the first reason, intercepting sunlight. Open ground roads and buildings are great at absorbing the heat that falls on them and reflect very little of it. That is why you can barely step on concrete barefoot. Phoenix, Arizona in the United States is famous for its urban heat island effect. My uncle had been there a few years ago and he was astounded to find that the soles of his shoe had almost melted off after he went for a five minute walk during the day. Fun. Trees with their canopies block heat from reaching these surfaces. Tree canopies can intercept over 90% of the sunlight and the heat that comes with it, allowing only 10% to infiltrate below the canopy. Some trees, like some species of beech trees and fig trees, which have large canopies and leaves with large surface areas, can block up to 97% of the sunlight that fall on them. It also helps when there is a cluster of trees rather than a solitary tree because their different heights and interlocking branches make this shade even stronger. The bulk of the cooling effect of trees is from intercepting sunlight. But the second reason, transpiration cooling, gives this entire process an extra boost. Trees drop water from their roots and transport it to the leaves where photosynthesis takes place. But up to 99% of the water that reaches the leaves is lost as water vapor when the stomata open and close to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen. This process is called transpiration and the resultant cooling effect is called transpiration cooling. Trees can lose between 70 and 120 liters of water through transpiration in a day, depending on the size of their canopies and the surface area of their leaves. How does transpiration cooling work? For that, we will need a bit of thermodynamics. I hated thermodynamics in school. I still do, actually. 
To convert to water vapor, liquid water on the leaf needs extra energy called latent heat. It draws this energy from the hot air around it as well as the sunlight that falls on it. When water is lost as vapor through transpiration, more energy leaves the system than was drawn to convert water into water vapor. According to the law of conservation of energy, if the amount of energy entering the system is less than the amount of energy leaving the system, then the system cools to maintain equilibrium. Usually the cooling effect of evaporation is limited to the surface from which water evaporates. For example, our body uses the same mechanism. When we sweat, the sweat draws heat from the skin and then evaporates, leaving the skin cooler. But with trees, this cooling effect is felt not only on the leaf surface, but around the tree and below the canopy of the tree. I've put a link in the description explaining why this is. This cooling effect of trees is an important and rather inexpensive way to cool our cities down, which have turned into permanent heat islands. Having rooftop gardens and trees around our homes reduce our energy consumption and have many other important benefits as well, like fresh air. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching and for your love and support to this channel. As always, there's a full transcript of this video in the first link in the description if you'd just like to read everything. Please like and share this video with anybody you think would find it useful. If this is your first time on Eco-Intelligent, please check out some of our other videos. And if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel so that you get a front row seat as we try to make the world ecologically intelligent.